If coffee gives you indigestion, switch to Postum. The makers of Postum, the favorite mealtime drink in millions of American homes, present those two lovable old characters from the hill country, Mom and Abner. Most of you folks listening, I know, are not ones to advertise your troubles. But if you suffer from indigestion... But what more glaring advertisement could there be for that fact than a sour, ill-tempered disposition and upset digestion is almost sure to give you? Maybe coffee nerves is to blame for your indigestion. For it's common knowledge that while many people can drink coffee without having their digestion upset, many others should never touch it. So if you're one of those, if you think coffee spoils your digestion, be sensible and switch to post them. For Postum can't possibly have any bad effect. It contains no caffeine or stimulant of any kind. And because of the distinctive full-bodied flavor that's Postum's own, this grand mealtime drink has become the favorite in millions of American homes. And you can get Postum in any of your favorite restaurants and hotels when you dine out. So there's every reason, if coffee gives you indigestion, to start drinking Postum instead of coffee. Make the change right away. And after giving Postum a really fair trial, say for two weeks, see if your digestion and your disposition aren't much improved. Ask your grocer for Postum tomorrow. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, friends, the Men's Protective Association, formed in Pine Ridge to defend the husbands against the unreasonable demands made by their wives, has given them so many new privileges that they now acclaim it a thorough success. The feminine population seems completely dominated. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner over at the Jotham Down store talking to Lum, who has just entered. Listen. Was there any mail, Lum? No, not nothing for the store. Uh-huh. What you got there? Oh, this is for me. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Doggy, they must have had an awful lot to say from the size of that envelope. I think it's a valentine. And I think I know who it's from, too. <laughs> who? Well, I sent one to a certain person, and I reckon she sent me one, too. <laughs> who? Morty Brooks? I ain't seeing who. Well, that's who it is, I bet you, Morty. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? Well, nothing. Except I still think you're wasting your time. You've been trying to spark at her ever since they moved to town. She ain't never give you no encouragement. Well, what do you want her to do? Throw her arms around my neck? Well, I don't care what she does. But anybody with half sense that knows she don't care nothing about you. I seen you Sunday when you went over there and sat down by her and, you know, and meeting, and she got up and scooted down to the fur end of the bench, clean away from me. Yeah, she's just bashful, I think. Yeah, she's any bashfuler than you are, why you never will get together then. Oh, I don't know. She must care something about me to send me a valentine. What does it say? I don't know. I ain't opened it yet. Oh. But I can tell her right now if she wants me to be her valentine, and I am. <laughs> or will be. Well, what do they mean by that, Lom, that will you be my valentine? What do they mean by it? Yeah. What is a valentine, anyway? Why, it's, uh... It is anyway, it's tough to think about that. I know the 14th of February is it every year. Yeah. Somebody you like real good, you're supposed to send them a valentine present. Let them know you're thinking about them and all that stuff. Uh-huh. Look, they always have pictures of hearts on them there, I've noticed. Yeah, love's mixed up in there somewhere or other. I don't know just how it works. When I sent Morty, had a big red heart and R run through it, and then a little lace looked like a doily all around it. <laughs> Ain't pretty. Uh, well, what's that supposed to mean, that big red heart and that lace and all that? It means you're in love with her. It's a good way of telling somebody without having to come right out flat-footed and saying it. Yeah. Well, I don't see how somebody thinks think you's in love with them because you sent them a picture of a 
heart with lace all around it and everything. Well, it sort of means that Cupid's got you. <laughs> Cupid. Don't you know who Cupid is? No, I reckon not. Who is it? You saw pictures of him, ain't you? Of him? Well, yeah, a little baby that goes around with a bow and R in his hand. Oh, oh, him, yeah. Says 1940 on him, him standing there by his grandpa. No, no, that's the new year coming in. But he favors him a right smart. Does, huh? Uh, this one's supposed to go around and shoot people in the heart and make them get in love. Well, they blame he's liable to kill somebody doing that. He, he don't actually shoot you. Just call it that. Oh. Body falls in love. The saying is that Cupid shot him with a heart. But he never, huh? Well, I don't know. I, I believe he shot me. Huh? <laughs> I don't mind telling you that Morty Brooks has got me to where I don't know where I'm a foot or a horseback. Well, if that's all it's worrying you, you're a foot, I'll tell you that. No, sir. If she wasn't interested, she wouldn't be sending me no valentine. That's the same. Yeah, well, go ahead, open it up, Lum. Let's see what it looks like. No, no. I'm going to wait till I get home to open it. Get home? Yeah. Get it all dirty down here. Oh, you won't. It's one of them pretty lace ones. I'm going to hang it right there on the setting room. Well, you can put it right back in the end, Bill. If it ain't going to get dirty, now let's go ahead and take a look at it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See what she's got. <laughs> Why, look at you. You're so nervous you can't hardly get it open there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the first little thing she did to show me how much she cares for me. Oh, it's all folded up. I bet. What's the matter? Nothing, Let's see it, Long. Let's see it. Oh, it's just one of them comic Now, comics. hand it here. Let me see it. What, what, what does it say down there, that writing down there? I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> if he ain't a beaut, you reckon she means that you look like that? Just forget about it. <laughs> I look at them ears <laughs> and that mustache. I know that that's growed on there. Or stuck on them. Looks like a real one. Yeah. Let's see what it says here, Lon. Mr. Romeo. Well, <laughs> I wish I had a valentine. A charming prince that was all mine. Is that what that says showing now? Yeah, that's the way it starts out here. Well, wait a minute. Maybe she ain't making fun of me after all. <laughs> Sounds like she's sort of in love with me. <laughs> Say she wishes she had a valentine. Huh? A charming prince. It was all mine, he yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and read the rest of it. You see, a man that would be good and true. Bless her heart. But I don't want no part of you. Huh? You think you are a ladies' man, but no gal could love you with that pan. Hmm. Your face looks like a plate of hash with that handlebar mustache. <laughs> So I'm still looking for a man divine, but you're just a comic valentine. <laughs> now, what's that dad blame funny about that? Well, that's a funny way she's got to tell you she loves you. <laughs> Give me that thing. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now, don't tear it up, Lom. I want to show that to Grandpa. If you mention this to a soul, Abner Peabody, I'll whop you right on top of the head. Got to where I can't even read my private mail around here without you telling it all over town. Oh, swan to goodness, turn it up. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And I I'll ain't told denied. nothing to nobody, neither. Wouldn't go telling nothing on you. <laughs> Your face looks like a plate of hash with that handlebar mustache. That's a gooder. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you hadn't have tore that up. I'd love to have kept that thing. I agree, that settles it. I'm a good mind to join that men's protective association myself. I believe I could lawsuit her for sending such as that through the mail. Out and out slander's all it is. Yeah, well, you can't join an association law unless you're married. I'll tell you that right now. Well, I ain't going to get married to get into the thing. I'll guarantee you that. I don't know. But it's a good thing, though, if you was married. I'll tell you, we sure saved old Moore's moose life the other day. That woman of his would have beat him to death if we hadn't separated him. She did hit Luke Spears there once. I grant you, that reminds me, is uh, Moe's in bad with the association? In bad with them? There's a sign down there on his window that says, Don't trade here. This shop's boycotted by the Men's Protective Association. Oh, oh, that. No, i seen that down there. No, we're doing that to help Moe's out. Help him out? Yeah. 
see it that way, why, that's the way we got to get even with this woman for breaking the rules the other day and jumping on him when she agreed not to. See, if moles don't do no business, why, she won't have no money to buy victuals with, and that way she don't eat, get even with her. Well, that's kind of hard on moles, ain't it? Huh? What does he say about it? Oh, well... I don't think he much likes it, Mose. He says it's just ruining his business. That's sure. But he's got to go with what the association says. Well, there ought to be some better way than that to punish her. Yeah, well, it might be. We did try to figure out something else. Wrecked her brains. Thought once of fining her $100 for it. And we'd have to think that Mose would have to pay it if we did just be out $100. Yeah. That's the only thing I see wrong with the organization Women folks don't abide by the rules. I don't know what the association can do about it. They can't horse whip them. No, no. Well, there's a committee working on that now. Please, to... here comes your grand defender, or whatever it is you call him. Uh, oh, Squire. <laughs> Maybe they found some way to punish these women when they bust the rules. There's been two or three uprisings in the last day or two. Uprisings? Yeah, women folks busting the rules. Are women. Yeah, howdy, Brother Squire. Yeah, come in, Squire. Uh, Brother Abner. I'm calling a special meeting down to Lodge Hall right away. Want all the members of the Men's Protective Association to be there, too. Hey, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Squire. I don't know where I can get away or not. Uh, couldn't we have it tonight? No, no. It's a matter of business. It can't wait, Brother Abner. We've got to act and act quickly or our organization is ruined. I just found out a while ago that the women of the town are having a secret meeting this afternoon over at Moe's Moose's house. And they're planning to organize a woman's protective association here in town. Uh-oh. Now, unless we can put a stop to it, conditions in this town will be ten times worse than ever were before. Oh, my goodness, yes. We've got our backs to the wall, men. Our freedom hangs in the balance. If we don't put a stop to this movement, we're going right back into marital slavery. We've got to fight for our rights, men, and fight to the last day. Well, it seems as though civil war is brewing in Pine Ridge. Did you ever stop at the end of the day to add up the number of times you'd been cranky and peevish with someone? Maybe you snapped at a clerk who couldn't help keeping you waiting. Maybe you lost your temper with your own family. Well, I know you'd much rather be cheerful and good-natured all the time. So consider this possibility. Maybe coffee nerves are making you tense and irritable. But while many people can drink coffee without ill effects, many others cannot. And that's why, if you think you have coffee nerves, you'll do yourself a real favor by switching to Postum. But Postum is entirely free of caffeine or stimulants of any kind. There's absolutely no chance of it getting on your nerves. Postum is a mellow, full-bodied mealtime drink with a rich, distinctive flavor all its own. And you can easily afford Postum, too but it actually costs less than one half cent a cup. So make it a point. If coffee nerves are to blame for your touchiness, to drink Postum instead of coffee. Now just give Postum a fair trial. Say for a couple of weeks, and even in that short time, see if the change hasn't done you and your nerves a world of good. Drink Postum. There's a reason. <laughs> forget, friends, be with us next Friday evening at this same time when we again visit Pine Ridge with Lum and Abner, who say, most kids who spend their youth raising cane spend their old age walking with one. Lou Cosby speaking. And remember, Postum, your best bet for a good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 